Hey YouTube, I have got another unbox video for you. This time I'm really excited about this plane. This is a Spitfire Mark II made by Phoenix model and it's an air, airplane that Tower, Tower Hobbies keeps in stock. This is a 55 inch wingspan airplane and it's an ARF. This is a GP EP airplane so as you can see by the photographs you can use either electric or gas. I'll be of course running this as an electric uh, electric airplane and um, I got a, I've got a couple of other Phoenix model planes um, one of them was a 300 uh, a 300 extra that I actually sold mainly because I just didn't fly it that much it was a fine airplane I just didn't fly it very often so I sold that before I uh, moved cross-country to a buddy of mine uh, I've been impressed with the Phoenix model uh, ARFs in the past and in this one in this case I was particularly drawn to this one because of the uh, quality of the kit and the reviews that I read on the groups. One, namely, one of the things I really thought was interesting was the oleo struts on the retracts. And there are mechanical uh, retracts on this one. And I know some, you know, there's a love-hate relationship out there. You either love them or hate them with the retracts. I happen to like mechanicals. Um, but at any rate, that's what it comes with, and that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and take this box apart and um, we'll get some video. I'll show the inside as it comes from the factory, and then once that's done, I'm just gonna unwrap everything and go over each, each part bit by bit um, so we don't have to be interrupted in the video watching me take plastic part. Okay, so here goes the lid. I'm gonna set that aside, and this is what you see when you open the package. They've got some bubble wrap on top that's taped over, a decal sheet, and a couple of other parts inside the box. Uh, this is the way it comes from the fa from the factory. I'm gonna take this all apart I'll try and lay the pieces back in there as neatly as I can so you can get an idea of how, how they pack it and where things are but um, I want to make sure I take all the plastic off before we get too much further into the look at the parts so That way it's not disrupted. All right guys I got the Spitfire unboxed and laid out on my table here and all I can say is holy smokes it is definitely an impressive bit of kit. I, uh, if you follow my channel, you know I'm working on a P51 Mustang. It's also uh, 55 inch, I believe. It's right in there. And I've kind of had to put that on pause due to a move and the fact that I don't have really a workshop at my disposal at the moment that allows me to, you know, do the things you need to do with sanding and filing and gluing. Um, so I'll get back to that. I will not abandon that project. That plane will fly. Uh, mark my words on that. But in the meanwhile, uh, I saw the Spitfire, and as much as I like the Dynam uh, Spitfire, it's a, it's a nice little foamy, I had a good time flying that plane, and I think it just looks beautiful in the air. And I know a lot of folks, when you, when you read discussions about the most graceful plane, the most important plane of the war, there's tons of opinions. In mine, I, I just like the Spitfire, and I like the way it flies. Uh, that, that elliptical-shaped wing, there's just something about it. So... Anyway, I want to go through this, this unbox part by part uh, just to give you an idea of what's included. And I got to tell you, I have no idea how Phoenix model does it. <laughs> because having just acquired the materials and the kit and the parts I need to build that Mustang, this plane is on sale at Tower for, it's like $154 or something. And the amount of hardware that you get for that price and the fact that I mean, if you the fact that it's built, and and to built to this extent, it, it's just it blows my mind. Now, I don't want to get into a debate on the merits of building your own versus you know buying these types of kits, but there is definitely a value proposition in being able to pick up an airplane that's completed to this degree of completeness, and and um, it gives you the benefits of flying balsa and the beauty of flying balsa. Uh, without having to spend the amount of time you have to spend assembling your own kit from from scratch. Now that said, there's a lot of merit in building your own too. I, ha I have fun just doing the build. You know, the build process itself is enjoyable. So there's value in that as well. I understand that. But in this case, this is a real nice shortcut for me to add uh, a mid-size, you know, 55 size Warbird to my hangar. Uh, that's made out of balsa without having to put in put in the time. Let's just be blunt. That let's call a spade a spade. So anyway, with that said, let's go through the parts. And I'm going to start without 
outside the kit first just to give you an idea of what I'm working on and I'll put some stats and information up in the link to, to kind of show you what I've what I've uh, how I've landed at the conclusions I've landed at so anyway I'll start with the motor this is now this does not come with the kit this is a this is a Cobra motor this one is a 4120 slash 16 it's a 610 kV motor and after looking at the test data that RC dude puts out I've elected to go with a master air screw three blade, and this is a 13 by eight. I also, you probably may have noticed, there's also a 14.7 uh, wood blade, and this is an XOR, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, XOAR, I'm sure you long timers will know the correct pronunciation for that. I'll just call it a XOR or maybe a, maybe XOR. Um, but anyway, I got one of these because 14 by seven two blade also produced some very intriguing numbers on RC Dude's uh, test of this Cobra motor in their in their workshop. So I got that one, and also because the spinner that comes with this plane is a two-blade spinner, not a three-blade. Although I believe the correct propeller for this airplane is a three-blade. I have on order an aluminum spinner, uh, a three-blade aluminum spinner that'll fit this plane as well. So there's a spinner, two-blade, and I have a two-blade two -blade prop, and I'll just test them and see which one I like better. I'd really like to fly with the three blade. And of course, if you have been watching my videos, you know those are gonna be yellow tips uh, as soon as I get a chance. So there's the motor and prop combination. I'll be using a 100 amp ESC only because that's what I've got. That is overkill. But I also know this plane can use a little bit of weight up front after reading through some of the threads. So I'm okay with that. I've got 100 amp ESC. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that guy up there. This motor peaks out at about 60 amps and that'll be on a five cell setup. A five cell 4,500 or 5,000 pack, depending on where we are with weight. So that, that's gonna be my power setup. And uh, these Cobra motors, they have a great reputation out on the threads, out on the forums. And again, this one is a 41 16, 610 kV. And I gotta tell you, rcdude.com love those guys every time i've ordered something from them I, I think i ordered the motor on a sunday and i got a ship notification on a sunday and the package started moving through the mail on monday so they are on top of their stuff and uh, the cobra motors are a nice alternative i do like rim fires i do like the e-flight power series motors uh, but in this case i settled on the cobra because frankly it was just a little bit cheaper and it made a little more power so, and, and I, I've used the Cobras before. I've got one in my Mini Talon and I, I like the motor quite a bit. Okay, on to servos. I went ahead with Tower's recommendation on the 75, HS75 BB Retract Servo from Hitech. That's gonna power the servos. And for the uh, main servos for the airplane, I'm using this Fataba 3004s. Now, you might notice there are six. Two for the flaps, two for the ailerons, one for the rudder, one for the elevator. So this plane requires six servos. These are standard size servos. The S3004s are mainstays. Um, this is not a 3D plane. I'm not gonna fly it like a 3D plane. I'm just gonna go out and have fun and fly some patterns and do, you know, warbird stuff with this, with this airplane. So those Futabas, they fit the bill very nicely for that. Okay, now we can actually start getting into the parts of the plane. And this is the one I wanted to get to right away because look at these guys. These are, they're mechanical retracts, but they're all metal, and they've got an oleo strut. I, I think I have to expand it. I'm not sure. I haven't messed with it yet, but this is an oleo strut. It will it will extend and, and compress. So I that's one of the things that really kind of got my attention when I started looking at this plane was was the fact that they've got um, a metal cased retract. There is plastic in there. Uh, I haven't again haven't taken it apart yet to look and see if I can get this to open. There we go. Yeah, so it looks like a, that, that is a plastic trunnion. Um, but I'm okay with that because as long as you fit it neatly, you're not going to put a lot of tension on this part anyway. Um, I, guess, I guess landing force, you're going to get a little, uh, little longitudinal force on that part. So we'll see how it holds up, but it looked like a pretty decent quality uh, retract to come in an ARF kit. So I was excited about those. Those are the retracts. Okay. Next up are the wheel wells. Uh, these are painted gray. They have to be trimmed quite a bit to fit in the plane. I've looked at the instructions already online. Looks like there's a, a good bit of trimming. Uh, I did see one guy post something about the paint flaking off 
when he trimmed his. So I'll be cognizant of that. I do have some Lexan body scissors I'll use to cut these out and hopefully I'll be able to uh, do that and get those fitted without too much, too much fuss um, and too much loss of paint. Anyway, those are the wheel wells. They, they have to be trimmed up quite a bit and they go in the bottom of the wing. Okay, wheels, nothing remarkable, not scale. I know, and by the way, I am not a scale guy. Uh, I, know, I know a lot of scale guys might look at this and say, oh, that's terrible. You know, it doesn't have the right wheels, but they're just wheels, nothing, nothing particularly interesting about them. They're just basic wheels. I might look for something a little better or more scale next, later on down the line, but for now, what they come with is fine. Okay, here's the uh, vertical stabilizer. The rudder is on, but I don't believe it's glued. Give me just a second. No, it is not glued. So that needs to be glued in. They're using uh, CA hinges. And um, I gotta tell you, you know, looking at the Monaco, this is a ribbed structure. This is not a solid, I don't know if you can see the ribs in the video. I know that light's not helping us here. But there are ribs in here, ribs here. This is not a solid piece of balsa. It's not sheeted. This is a, a ribbed setup in case you're interested in that type of thing. All right, so we'll set that aside. Let's take a look at the horizontal stabilizer. I'm gonna be careful not to drag this across the table. I don't wanna scratch it. And I got, man, did they do a nice job on this covering? I, I'm not, I can't do covering this good. I, st I still need to practice, but uh, the covering looks really nice. I mean, the edges, the corners, I, I can't, I can't do it that well. <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, takes me a little of that, little effort to get uh, covering to look this good. And a lot of ARF kits I've seen, they've sagged and had wrinkles. This is shockingly good. I mean, it's tight. There's a little bit of a wrinkle right there. Might try and heat that up a little bit and see if we can get that to go away. But I would say overall that covering is pretty darn good. Probably could use a little bit of cleaning just to get rid of some of the smudges from the from the application process, but no complaints on my part about that at all. It's, it's beautiful. Okay, now let's get on to the wings. And same thing, again, I'm not a scale guy, so I, I couldn't tell you with any degree of authority about these invasion stripes. I know that uh, I've heard folks complain about the invasion stripes. They don't belong on the top. They only belong on the bottom. I don't really know. And I frankly, I don't really care. Um, I think they look cool. And I think from an orientation perspective, they're gonna be somewhat helpful with the plane in the air. Now, the flaps. That's another thing that got my attention with this plane. And I'm sorry about the goofy cam camera angles. I'm trying to get this flap to come down without, uh, while I'm holding the camera. And I don't know, there it goes, do I have it? Yep, looks like I got it, there we go. Okay, check that out, man. <laughs> How cool is that? Uh, split flaps and they even went they even painted the interior bay. They didn't just leave it a balsa color I mean, that's just a nice touch I know if you're building your own model you expect to do that kind of thing But again for a hundred and fifty dollar ARF. I mean come on. That's crazy now If you're watching this video and you're interested in this plane I'm gonna give you one tip that I picked up from the from the groups and it makes a lot of sense They say before you glue these flaps in put your horn in because if you don't it's a pain in the neck to get that thing screwed in after you've already glued in the, the flap hinge. So make sure you do that. Uh, I will definitely be doing that. Anyway, split flaps, really, really cool. And uh, the aileron, oh, there's a little wrinkle, but see, that's like the worst of it. I, I can knock that out in just a second. So maybe a little bit of heat and we'll get those wrinkles figured out. That looks like the aileron servo pocket. And again, looking at the wing, it's just beautiful. I, I can't, there's the wheel well pocket that has to be obviously cut out and then the wheel wells will glue on top of that but it is beautiful they've done a great job with the covering on this uh i'd really, one day i'd love to meet the person at vq that does their coverings because he must be a ninja and i bet he's he or she is pumping out hundreds of these things uh as a, as the as the day jobs goes so anyway yeah covering is just spectacular uh Another beef that I've heard from scale people is they, they'll talk about taking steel wool and knocking the shine off. And that makes sense. You know, I, I get that. Um, you might want to might wanna do that if you're into that kind of detail. I don't know that I'll bother with it. Um, gloss doesn't, again, I'm not a scale guy, so it doesn't hurt my feelings to see it glossy. Um, may, maybe, maybe at some point I'll mess around with that. But anyway, yeah, wing looks great. Um, they've got the string set up so you can pull your aileron servo lead through the wing and then uh, there we go.
So that is, that would be the starboard wing. Let's take a look at the port wing. I won't go through as much detail. I won't fuss around with the flap, but I just wanted you to get a look at the entire kit because it is just gorgeous. Look at that covering. I mean, for an ARF, come on. <laughs> they are, they are definitely exceeding expectations at this point. I've had a, I've had a number of ARF kits and while they mostly do a good job, and by the way, uh, I have a Great Plains Escapade MX, and they did a very nice job of the covering, but I had to spend a lot of time getting the wrinkles out of that one. This one, just right out of the box, is just clean as can be. I am super impressed with that. And then there's the underside of the wing. Same deal. It looks spectacular. Looks really good. I'm, I'm, I've got my eyes off the viewfinder and I'm looking at the wing for problem areas and I just don't see any. Um, that is a pen, it looks like, from uh, when they were taking measurements and cutting. But anyway, hey v VQ guys, don't know if you watch these types of videos on YouTube or not, but good job. I mean, I am impressed. Nice job on the covering. You got to give that guy a raise. Give him some more money. Really nice. Great job on the covering. All right, I'm just setting that down and let's take a look at let's take a look at the fuselage. Uh, I, I already, in fairness, I opened the battery hatch and took a look and again, super impressed with the, with the amount of work they did. Although I don't know if who they got painting the pilots or if they haven't, but man, he looks like he's he needs some sleep. There's some dark rings around those eyes. Boy, he, I don't know. Those are supposed to be, oh, those are supposed to be his eyeballs. Wow. Okay, so the painter, the pilot painter, he needs a little help. Because <laughs> he's got some dark rings there. Look at that. That's, I guess that's his eyeball. It's like a, uh, one of those Japanese anime characters, it looks like. Anyway, let me pull the battery hatch off and take a look in there. And this is a little bit like my spacewalker. It's got the same type of front front hatch that pops off and it's got a spring loaded uh, release in there. So that's good. And look at the battery tray. Let me, I'm gonna put something in there for reference so you can see what size we're dealing with. Uh, when I was working out, out my plan for this plane, I really didn't know how big that battery tray was. Um, but here, my hand, I'm just a normal size guy. Let me just take my hand and put it in there. So to the firewall, from the firewall, there's my finger right up at the firewall opening right there. That's my middle finger, it's the longest finger. I go back to about this former. That's where my palm rests. That's where the tray, the shelf is. So that's the battery tray. That's a pretty substantial compartment. Uh, when I do the build, I'll do a build review on this and I'll, I'll get the batteries out and put some known batteries in there to give you an idea of how big this is. I don't have a, a measuring stick with me or a, a measuring tape or a ruler, so I can't measure it right now, but it's pretty, it's pretty good size. Uh, that's definitely going to hold a big battery. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to be flying on 5S, so I don't know that I'll be using all that space. That means I expect to have my batteries slammed all the way against that firewall based on what I've read about the uh, the weight and the CG on this plane. Anyway, here's a look on the on the inside. Lots of space in there for things like a uh, things like a hobby eagle if you want or 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 just a receiver. You can put your you put your receiver in there. I don't I don't know if there is enough room actually for a Hobby Eagle. That might that might be a challenge to get that uh, set in there. I mean, it could be done, but you're, it's going to be a little fiddly because the Hobby Eagle, you're going to want that in the back near the... Well, actually, nope, you're going to want that up front near the center line or the CG. That might be a little tricky. And then I also noticed this plate uh, where the shelf, they took the center out. I don't know if they did that for weight or what. Would have been kind of nice if they left that in there. I might put some balsa in there uh, just to give myself a shelf for mounting electronics. But um, yeah, the the, the uh, stabilizer, if you choose to use one, and the receiver, that's where they would go. But anyway, enough of that. As far as the rest of it goes, one another nice thing I like about uh, buying um, an ARF kit like this is look at the detail where the canopy glued on. Now, they have foam or they have canopy glue out there and if you if you're getting into gluing your own canopies i recommend you use it because it helps do things like avoid it helps you avoid uh, hazing the canopy if you use other types of glue but on top of the glue they also put this green tape down and man that's just another detail 
I don't know how they get taped to bend like that and not get wrinkles. I could not do that. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Um, and look at that. That looks, there's no seam there. That is, that's a single piece of tape. I, I just don't know how they do it. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's tape or not. I, I don't know how they do that. But it looks good. I'll tell you that. And then back on the back here, we've got a seam right there. But same deal with the covering. It's just, now there's some wrinkles back here, you'll see, but that's that's over the where the stabilizer goes. So that gets cut out anyway, and there's no, there's no balsa there. So no big deal that there's a little bit of bubbling there. That's all gonna get cut. Here's the bottom of the plane. I mean, I can't even tell, I can't, I can't even tell where the line is for the, you can feel it. <laughs> You, there, there, you can feel the line, but I'll be darned if I can see it. So there's definitely a line down there for the invasion stripes. But man, do they look, and it's just so lined up, just perfect. I mean, seriously, VQ, give this person a raise. Give this department a raise. They're doing a good job. Okay, the bottom of the airplane, this might be a better place. Oh, there's a spot right there that might work for, for a Hobby Eagle. It's under the wing. Uh, and this is this is the cockpit floor is what that is. But... While you're building the plane, you can definitely do that. You can definitely stick it in there, and uh, there would probably be plenty of room in there. And then, of course, the servos will go here. Uh, maybe that's why this is cut out for a servo. Maybe that's a throttle servo. Maybe that's what this is all about. Uh, obviously, I don't have to worry about that, being an electric guy, but, yep, those are the servos for the elevator and the rotor. Uh, the wing saddle, those are just relief cuts. No big deal. They're going to be hidden by the wing anyway. You won't see those. But nice job. I mean, it, it's folded over night, nice and neat. The cuts don't go past the edge. They go right to it. So beautiful job on the covering. I'm really impressed with the covering. I know I'm kind of doting on it a little bit, but you got to give credit where credit's due. Covering's one of the harder things, in my opinion, to do. Um, and they've just done a really nice job with this covering. So let's, let's just take a run down the side real quick, and I'll shut up and just let you look at the plane. There are a couple little bubbles down here. I don't know if you can see that on the film or not. I'll try and get the try and get the camera moved to give give a different light angle. But yeah, there's a little bit of bubbling down there. But I mean, compared to what I would do to this, it's fine. Again, some bubbling right where the stabilizer goes, but doesn't count. That's you know, it's a foul ball because that's all going to get cut out anyway. So who cares? It doesn't. It's immaterial. I think my biggest gripe so far is that guy. He doesn't. He doesn't have any lips either. They sh they could have painted some lips on him, I guess. So, but look at his scarf. He's got a little blue and white polka dot scarf. <laughs> I guess that's British. So, other than, other than that, yeah, the quality. You, you got to give him top points for the for the covering work. All right, that's the fuselage. Let's set that aside, and now let's take a look at the cowl. I was immediately impressed with the cowling it's got the air scoop now i did i read that somebody mentioned something about cutting that air scoop open mine came open i don't know if that was a change or if somebody misspoke or what i don't know but that one's open um and that makes a lot of sense to me because i can tell you right now my ese is going to find a home somewhere in that airstream coming through there uh this is definitely going to be a sealed front end once you get that spinner on the front and the prop on the front that's going to seal up the front end really well so super important as we discussed in my in my dynam spitfire mods video how important it is to create airflow it looks like they've accounted for that in this yeah it comes all the way through they've accounted for it in this setup so i'm really happy to see that that means i don't have to cut it and i don't have to chip the paint and do all the other things that go along with messing with it so the cowling as far as the paint goes i mean that's like almost automotive there are a couple there's a couple little bubbles or spots but man you really got to be looking for them to see them where did i see those i don't know it's just really good and you know by the way it's a warplane so you know they did not look like this for long these are fighting aircraft so uh, i think those are the bubbles i saw right there yeah there's a couple little little bubbles in there but again not not a big deal i i really don't care in fact 
the mufflers probably get glued on right over that, so I'll be able to mask them with the mufflers. So anyway, cowling looks really good. Uh, they did a nice job. It doesn't, they, <laughs> they were kind of clever in their scheme, if you notice the camo. The camo stops before it reaches the edge of the cowling, so you don't have to worry about it matching it up with the front of the nose. So kind of clever, and that's fine by me. It works. I don't have any gripes with that. Okay, let's take a look at the hardware. So firewall, this is gonna be the standoff for the electric kit. I, I know Phoenix models enough to know that that's exactly what that is. So this, this, these are standoffs for the motor mount and the Cobra will bolt onto that somewhere. Here is the wheel well, uh, or the rear wheel, sorry. Very typical application in RC. This is just a very typical wheel well. There's a couple of ribbons that are the color of the, of the uh, I don't know what color they are. They don't match the plane exactly. They're off a little bit, but apparently that's to cover something. I don't know. We'll figure it out when it's time to build it. And then uh, this looks like, again, some kind of cover. Not sure exactly what. Now, the landing gear door doors um, or landing gear skirts, whatever you want to call them, I've, I've seen plenty of videos where the guys, uh, or, or plenty of discussion rather, where the guys have been concerned that these do not sit flush against the wing when when the gear are completely retracted. That's unfortunate. I, I, that's We'll see how mine goes together. Maybe mine will be different, I don't know. Uh, probably not, probably be the same thing. But that that's the one that was the one big fault I, I saw in the engineering of the of the plane is that you really, you know, to to be right, they these should close up against the, you know, flush against the wing. You shouldn't be able to see them hanging down below the wing. We'll see. But there they are. And there are two layers too. There's a step in there, which is kind of nice. I guess that's for strength. And then here's the other one. Don't know what the heck that is. That's another piece of ball, so we'll figure that out when we start building it. Here is the glow mount, which we won't be using, the glow tank, which we won't be using. And there's a pretty substantial bag of hardware. So screws, clevises, um, can't see due to shadows. And that looks like nylon wing bolts, and these are control horns. And there's some shrink tape, uh, there's some surgical tubing in there, which is really cool, nice touch, because you put those around the clevises to keep those from, from uh, keep the clevises from opening up. They go, they go right, there and those keep those clevises pinched closed on the control horn and they prevent them from opening up during flight which is a very nice touch uh, more of the fuel tank parts again won't be using those and here are the plastic form mufflers uh, that, that'll go on the side of the cowling right there and these are the screws for the uh, wheel pants the manual this is a 1 8 scale bird and they call it a Mark II. I know that I know that uh, uh, there were some discussion in the groups that this isn't a Mark II because it missed, you know, some antenna or some motor or who knows what. And um, again, the instructions call for a motor that puts out between 1,000 and 1,400 watts. They suggest a 480 kV. I went with a 610, um, and I'm still going to be in that in that range where I need to be. And then the decal sheet. Uh, looks good. There, there were some questions on the on the thread on RC groups about this plane on where all of those stickers go. So uh, that looks like flap index is what it says, and it looks like maybe a fuel cap decal, um, emergency. What does that say? Emergency what? Sorry about the focus. Let me see if I can get this. I can't read it emergency something release maybe and a whole bunch of other uh, control access panels a whole bunch of decals that come with this plane which is kind of nice it's kind of nice kind of a nice touch so that's it guys that's the unbox i think i've covered everything uh, I'm going to close the video out by saying thanks for watching. Um, hopefully this has been helpful. I, 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 was not on, I wasn't able to find a, a really good, uh, thorough unboxing video on YouTube for this plane. So hopefully this one will, will help people that are looking at this plane trying to make a decision. And I got to tell you, based on every video I've seen about it and minus some you know, minor configuration issues on Maidens, these things look like they fly great. And uh, the guys who talk about them just love them. So I will. I won't do a step-by-step -step build video, but once I get the plane together, I'll I'll do another video to show uh, what I learned from the build 
and uh, of course we'll try and get we'll try and get a maiden a maiden video so uh, everyone can take a look at and see how the plane flies once we get it up in the air. Uh, one last thing, I have not forgotten about the Tidewater. I'm, I actually started putting that together already, and I'm probably about 75% finished with that build. I just have to do some wiring work, and, and that one will be ready to do a, uh, a build review video. And uh, so that one's getting close to being done as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope the video was helpful to you. And if it was, I definitely appreciate it if you hit subscribe and like, because that helps my results show up higher for other people who are looking for this type of content. All right, YouTube, take care.